I'm your host, Peter Komandowski, and welcome to Surviving Bad, where we explore Iowa's stories of survival, hope, and inspiration. The Iowa National Guard has a global presence and a lot of respect. Now, to be that highly regarded takes a lot of work. And a side of that work that's not often talked about is the investment in the health, welfare, and wellness of the soldiers. The modern soldier has the best tools, technologies, and people working together to help them be successful. And we've brought some guests together to find out how they do that. All of you, welcome to the show. Let's start with some introductions. Joe, can you lead us off, please? Hello, Peter. Yeah, I'm Joe Jelmstead, and I am the Command Senior Enlisted Leader for the Iowa National Guard. Uh, as a part of my responsibilities, I advise and work with uh, the Adjutant General on soldier development, uh, airman development, and uh, training to include uh, physical resiliency and wellness. And so we work with on the Air Guard side, the Comprehensive Airman Fitness and their four pillars of wellness. And on the Army side, Holistic Health and Fitness and the five domains of readiness. Tanya, what is your role? Hi, I'm Tanya Weinkoff. I'm a family nurse practitioner and a graduate of the University of Iowa. I am the full-time provider out here at the 185th Air National Guard in Sioux City, Iowa. The job and the role that I play is multifactorial and also emulates much of what the Army focuses on as well, the mental, social, physical, and the spiritual aspects of our airmen. And well, thank you very much. And Natalie, you have a special purpose too, I hear. You're also referred to as, uh, is it Q? A little yes. Different. So my name is Natalie Q. I have been on the Camp Dodge post in Johnson for about 10 years. I do all of the instruction on our in our wellness center here on post. So I work with our patrons on that overall fitness um, that was referred to earlier. And we do focus a lot on the strength, the cardio, the mobility, flexibility, and injury prevention with our soldiers. Um, and on top of that, we do really try to work with those on nutrition and just battling that overall health and wellness um, to keep our soldiers fit and ready. You know, it's a fascinating thing because we all have respect for our, for our soldiers and we respect that there's a sense of readiness there. But when you talk about guardsmen, and I don't know which one of you wants to talk about it, we're talking about members of Iowa families that spend a limited amount of time working for the guard and a lot of time back in their community. And it's, it's quite a delicate balance to, to maintain that readiness and, and be a dad or a mom or something like that. Uh, what kind of issues, let's start with you, Tanya, what kind of issues do, do parents and, and people face when they're in the guard? So as parents, we um, face deployments, sometimes very frequent deployments, leaving our spouses and our children behind, often missing um, celebrations such as birthdays and holidays. And so that's where our mental and our spiritual and our social aspects come in as well. And then we also deal with our own children um, growing up, going through the school system, being surrounded by the guard, seen as a positive influence and wanting to join as well. You know, Joe, I, it's a it's a fascinating thing to me because when you think about a military organization, you don't really think about the whole person as much. I mean, for me as an outsider, I, I don't. And, but yet, the guard is very, very interested in making sure that we have a healthy and whole human being, both while they're serving the guard and when they go back in the community. Is that something, or is that something new, or how has that evolved in the guard over the say the last twenty years? Because it seems new to me. You know, Peter, it is fairly new, and, and I've been in for uh, nearly 30 years now, and the transition in that time uh, has been significant. Uh, we see the value of the people in our organization, as many uh, civilian organizations do, and so our approach toward readiness and our approach toward uh, uh, well-being uh, isn't just about them being uh, great service members. It's about uh, building our service members to be their best in all areas of their lives and to have that balance so that... Uh, so that they can uh, manage having a civilian career and a family and, and also be in uniform to serve their nation. And Natalie, in terms of that wellness, so you're focused a lot on the physical wellness in terms of the regimen they go through to stay in shape. Um, Very is, much so. Oh, sorry. Oh, that's okay. Is this something that, 
that the guardsman welcomes or is it like oh no i gotta go see the queue again or <laughs> um i might be the wrong person to ask um <laughs> if they like to see me or don't see me but um the thing is we as i see myself as also part of the iowa national guard and we are looking to give them as much opportunity as possible to find that balance that has already been talked about. So being that mom, being that dad, um, that brother, that sister, and, and whatever is going on, they have opportunities through being a guardsman or guardswoman um, that is unique to them. So these classes and the fitness that we provide is really to help them try to find that that bigger balance because um, in the end, it's rough. It is rough, especially if you um, get used to, let's say you're training for your test and then you take some time off and then you come back and train again. That little up and down, that roller coaster becomes a little much. And so we really try to focus on keeping that maintenance and then avoiding that up and down so we don't have injuries across the board with our service members. Well, these are all great points. We're going to take a short break, and when we come back, we'll continue our conversation with Joe, Natalie, and Tanya. Stay tuned. You don't want to miss this. I may never have met you. We don't go way back. Maybe we wouldn't even be friends if we did. But when you wear a mask, you have my respect. Because your mask doesn't protect you. It protects me. I wear my mask to protect you. Mask up, America. Even though there's so much against us, you will see me choose to protect myself and my community from the coronavirus by wearing a face cover. And even with my face covered, you will see me making music and bringing light to all no matter the time. Join me in wearing a face covering to help stop the spread of the coronavirus. Because covering your face is one small act of kindness that has the power to bring us together. Welcome back to Surviving Bad. I'm your host, Peter Komandowski, and we're talking about the Iowa National Guard's work to build the best soldiers, airmen, and the best persons to represent our country. Now, Joe, you know, what is it like for somebody to, to enter into the Guard today? You know, we think of something like boot camp. To me, boot camp would be like a huge impediment, you know, because it would scare me. It, it's something hard. But I'm guessing from what you're sharing with us, that boot camp is a lot different today than it was years ago and that you're talking about the whole person a lot more than just the physical and the, the guts and glory side of, of getting physical. Yeah, Peter, I think, you know, boot camp or initial entry training uh, has transitioned significantly over the years, uh, just as we've learned to uh, uh, the value of taking care of our individuals and, and how uh, they work and function. Uh, we transition boot camp as well. Uh, we understand that our service members are a slice of society, each having uh, different experiences, different backgrounds, different needs, and, and different ways to motivate them to success. And so as they come through, boot camp is still uh, that, that uh, achievement in your life that you'll never forget. Uh, uh, succeeding there and getting through uh, is something that uh, you'll share with friends and family uh, to your end days. Um, but from then on, our goal really is to maintain that fitness and maintain that wellness and readiness uh, throughout their lives instead of it being something that they need to achieve to pass a physical training test once a year. Uh, we'd like to see them make life changes in their lifestyle uh, in areas of you know nutrition and wellness and and uh, health and fitness and all those different areas that uh, complement each other uh, to uh, improve our lifestyles and our lives. Well, Tanya, when you encounter people first getting involved with the Guard, I, I guess that it's a lot more proactive now from the wellness and health point of view for you to deal with these soldiers and give me an idea of the kind of resources they have. What, what would an orientation to that be like? 
So the military becomes a second family. You build a support system within the military itself. And we have chaplains available. We have social workers that are available full time. And to teach those aspects that make a good military member to bring it outside to their civilian side as well in order because they were surrounded by social media and sometimes their support system is not what it needs to be so we're there to help lift them up and carry them through these times but also we are there for when they encounter troubles within their medical aspect as well, such as um, poor eating behaviors, which lead to abnormal lab results. And, and so we can sit down and talk to them one-to-one, -one, face to face, and review these things with them and teach them how they can make better choices and become healthier overall. Now that that's a good point. Is is the physical element? It has a balance with the mental element, and of course the environmental issues that happen there. Um, are there a lot of problems that, that members of the guard encounter, not just as newbies, but as as they're in their careers? Are, are there facing challenges that maybe the guard is better equipped to help them with than out in the private world, the civilian world? I think so because we do make those resources available to them. We pick up the phone, we make a phone call when we hear that a member is in trouble or that a member just isn't doing well. Where on the civilian side, outside in the world in general, they may not have that resource and not know where to go. And, and Natalie, I'm, I'm curious, what would make your choice? We're working with you on the base better than say going out to a health club or a YMCA or something like that. What do you bring to the table that, that sort of bridges this gap between the time they're gone and the time they're there in your hands getting trained? I love this question. Um, I always considered us to be just this little gem. Um, we're kind of this hidden secret on post, but the number one is our facility is growing and getting better. But two, our classes, our services, um, are actually free. We are 100% free to those that can use our facility. So you work on post, um, you have your uh, military ID and even spouses. So it's a benefit for the family. Um, and I did want to jump in just a tiny bit on like the lifestyle change. So we do focus on that um, as well. And um, having us be available, being beneficial in that we're right here. Um, I know if you haven't been able to visit our post, but you know you don't have to drive very far to get to it. There's no 15 minute drive. Most people walk or jog down here um, prior to their workout. So a, mem a guardsman or a guardswoman or an airman, even when they're not sort of there, they can come on base and use the facilities. Correct. Right. Yep. So, so like 24 seven or every day. Yep. If we have um, like, you know, schools that are on post and so visiting soldiers from different states and all that, like as a soldier, we're available for them. Um, and so it's been pretty neat because I, I am still civilian. I started my training in the civilian world. Um, I like to, like I said, I represent the Iowa National Guard as well. Um, so it's been so great to see it grow on post with what they were doing here. Um, Cause not all posts have trainers available from what I've been told. So that might be a question for Command Sergeant Major. Well, well, we'll consider some of that after the break. We're going to take a short break, and we'll talk with our guests about not just the importance of the National Guard as a whole and, and what a guardsman goes through in the course of a year, but also the value of every single member of the Guard as an individual when they leave the base. We'll see you all after the break. You don't want to miss this. Every second, 127 new devices connect to the internet. You can feel it happening. Our digital world expanding with every breath. We're entering a whole new era of connectivity and Mediacom will be ready to power it with one of the nation's first 10G platforms. 
we'll be bringing you more speed, more capacity, more security, and the power to do more than you ever dreamed possible. Whether it's advice on managing your anxiety or tools to help you stay grounded, Coping 19 provides a range of resources and self-care tips to help you cope with this pandemic. We can help. Find the resources that work best for you at coping-19.org. Welcome back to Surviving Bad. We're talking about a pretty special group of Iowans, the Iowa National Guard. Um, let's learn a little bit about what a guardsman or a guardswoman goes through with the guard as part of their life. Joe, tell us what it's like. Well, there's there's certainly challenges to it, Peter. It takes uh, a lot of time and energy uh, uh, from their individual schedule, uh, from their personal lives. Uh, uh, we're known for for the traditional one weekend a month and two weeks a year, but we've been a far straight from that for many years. Um, and so our service members, uh, as, as we've seen here in Iowa, have answered the call for the derecho, the uh, COVID, uh, some civil unrest missions, and, and kind of across the board uh, have responded to the needs of Iowans. And that's a, a great thing, um, but it's not free. And so uh, those are sacrifices that those individuals make uh, to be ready to uh, answer that call as needed. Now, in the course of a career, um, what what amount of deployment does are, are all guardsmen de deployable, or do most of them have deployments at some point in their lives? Well, we work on a, a, a rotational basis, uh, if you will. So uh, it varies between the Army and Air side, uh, but each organization uh, has a schedule uh, where they're training, they're preparing. Uh, they're in a cycle should they be needed for deployment, and then they come back into cycle for preparing and, and whatnot. So we're maintaining a readiness, but it's a rotational uh, type of readiness, and they're in different different states uh, in different times of the year or different years, I should say. So that'll help keep everybody fresh, keep them home with their family as much as possible, and still get the best in the field. It does, Yes. You know, another issue I want to look at, because I, I think very, very few people understand what a valuable service the Guard has done and the military in general and watching over its own. You know, we, we have a topic of PTSD, which a lot of people associate with with military service. But the fact is that it's an all person problem. And it was the real early research and recognition of PTSD by the military that led to tremendous advancements for all civilians and all people that that deal with this issue. Um, I guess, Tanya, you, should, you, you might be pretty proud knowing there's a legacy of that kind of achievement with the Guard. Absolutely, and there's continuing research within the VA system, even as we speak now. It's a never-ending study that also includes the members of the military and the civilian side as well. And we've, what we have found is that individuals who have been exposed to traumatic experiences may exhibit symptoms of PTS many years down the road that can not only affect their personal life, their marital life, but their interactions with their coworkers, friends, and children alike. It's pretty amazing because I work with, with mental health professionals in the civilian world. And you know what, what the military learned years ago and learned to address is now sort of an emerging new area of mental health that's getting a lot of attention and energy. So in a lot of respects, members of the Guard and soldiers have had some of the best care in the world to deal with issues that men, the rest of the world is waiting to catch up to. You're so true there. We, we have our embedded within our group in our 185th wing, a social worker who is there to address any type of mental health issues that may arise. And not only that, but we're able to refer to outside agencies such as the VA, uh, the Vet Center or the VA Mental Health Center or to local organizations just for counseling in general. You know, that's another thing that comes to mind. The more I encounter and my friends encounter dealing with doctors, they often give us advice about taking better care of ourselves. Um, and when it comes to things like stress and anxiety, 
Natalie, I, I guess the, the word is that if I get more exercise, I should feel more relaxed and more comfortable. Is there a real? There must be a real powerful correlation between staying fit and exercise and being able to deal with mental health challenges. I really believe so. Um, they say, you know, when we move, not only is it helping um, break away from that mental stress, whether it's work or family or outside stressors, but you get that time to breathe, to just focus on the task at hand. So um, one of my biggest uh, tips for people um, is sometimes it's that lack of motivation though, that, that it's hard to get moving. It's hard to get into wanting to relieve that stress. And so you got to find something that you enjoy. There's so much out there that once, you know, if you like to run, start walking and running. If you like to do a little bit of lifting, start there. If you're a yoga person, start there. Um, you know, there's boxing, there's all of this stuff, right? So we kind of forget. And so that's kind of the one thing. And it's huge. I mean, people come here over their lunch um, because they get that break in their day and they go back and can be more productive. You know, Joe, something came to mind as, as Natalie was talking and I was thinking, you know, for many of us, as we get older, we miss being part of a football team, being part of a team. And, and it, I've come to hear sort of in, in the background or everything you've said that there's sort of a team here, a team that lasts long into somebody's life that, yeah, you just might meet once a month, but there must be great pride and satisfaction from people getting a job done together. Absolutely, Peter. Uh, you know, and that's a that's a part of what it is. And as Tanya said earlier, we're we're a family here. And so uh, you've got that support and you've got the encouragement as well. Uh, maintaining physical readiness isn't an option. It's a condition. And so uh, our individuals are expected to maintain that uh, physical fitness standard and leaders are expected uh, and required to encourage them to do that. So you know, you've got the uh, the support of the family, you've got the encouragement of the family, and you've got all uh, all of the family uh, striving to help you to succeed. Those are great points. We're going to take a short break. And after a break, we're going to invite our guests to share some final comments and some good advice for whether you're looking at the military or civilian life may help you. You don't want to miss this. See you after the break. Our fight against coronavirus isn't over. We still have to slow the spread and do our part. Let's wear face masks in public. Stay six feet or more from others. Follow state and local guidelines. Wash our hands frequently and stay home when we feel safe. For ourselves, for our loved ones, for our future. Let's move forward together. Learn more at coronavirus.gov. Today, more than ever, you need fast, reliable internet. At Mediacom, we want you to know you can count on us. Our fiber-powered 100% gigabit technology network was built for the future. We have enormous capacity and power and 99.99% .99 network reliability. So even though these are uncertain times, we're prepared. And you can be certain we'll keep your world connected. If you love concerts and live theater, going to baseball games, and eating in restaurants inside, if you love parties and the small talk with the guy who makes you iced coffee the right way, then wear a mask and let's beat this virus so we can get back to the things we love. Mask up, America. Today on Surviving Bad, we're talking about the Iowa National Guard. They represent us, our country. They are the best because of the work put in to bring out the best in them. That work and values that they represent are important to all of us. Let's hear what advice our guests have to share. Natalie, let's start with you. Give our viewers a bit of advice. What do you think will help guide them in life in terms of the lessons you've learned from working with the Guard? Well, on that wellness side, we're designed to move. And if you're struggling and you need motivation, um, find something that you like. Start there and only give it 20 minutes a day. 
and let it go. Um, we're all going to have ups and downs. So remember that, meaning uh, not every day is 100%. And it's just, it's you're looking long term. And so find that buddy. That's one thing in the guard. You're looking to, you kind of have a squad, you have a battle buddy, you have your people that help you. You got to find them to help keep you motivated and give it time. That's the last thing. We all want results yesterday and it doesn't happen that way. We got to give it minimum 12 weeks on that fitness side. All righty. And Tanya, what advice would you have to share with our listeners? I would have to say that the, National Guard is a great organization to allow an individual to continue to grow. It provides great educational benefits and post-educational benefits as well. And it does bring everyone together as a family. So you have that com comrade experience within the organization as well. And Joe, you're also a dad. You know, all of you here are parents. But I mean, how does how does this relate to raising children in the world? What kind of values sort of become so important to you when you go home at night? Well, I, you know, I just think that uh, for anyone out there, it's never too late to make a positive change in your life, uh, whether that be physical, nutritional, spiritual, mental. Uh, you know, don't be afraid to to make that change and and reach for it. Uh, uh, in minor steps and uh, just continue to, uh, to work to better yourself uh, from the point that you're at. Um, I've learned a lot over my years of service um, and uh, I've had a lot of ups and downs in my life as well and, and challenges, but uh, each time uh, uh, we just uh, need to look for those opportunities to make those improvements and, and better ourselves. A young man in high school or middle school is watching you right now. What would you tell them? would be a benefit for them to look at the guard for? Well, I, uh, I started 30 years ago uh, and my goal was to get school benefits and I was gonna be, uh, be done. Uh, but as I came into the guard and found out what it was about and the, and the opportunity uh, to build, grow myself uh, and uh, become part of a team, uh, it's taken me 30 years uh, and I am still not done. So that's my advice to him. Thank you all so very much. And thank you for joining us today. Check out our website at HealthyIowa.org for more information and keep your eye on Mediacom MC22 for our next episode of Surviving Bad, where we explore Iowa stories of survival, hope, and inspiration. On Mediacom MC22, your local programming leader.